Do you know what's on at Christmas then? Or is it the usual rubbish? No, no, it's really exciting. There's the stars of Bethlehem Awards Night. It's not just soaps and drama or science fiction. It's a bit of everything. I bet it's the same format. All those gorgeous stars in skimpy costumes. That's just the men. No, no, it's going to be different this year. Anyway, something light-hearted to watch after all that turkey and Christmas pudding. Mm. No, no, it's not just the usual soaps, old films, Doctor Who. It's about history, adventure, real people. Mainly from the Holy Land. Gosh. Bethlehem Award Night, sponsored by Bright Comet Chocolates. I, I am speaking from the London Palladium <laughs> with nominees from all over the world. Now, our first nominee 
for History Forever, live from Hampton Court Gardens, is Lucy Wurzel. <laughs> Hello, I am a very famous historian and I like dressing up in historical costume. For my nomination, I thought I'd take you back to Bethlehem because in actual fact, I don't believe Jesus was born in a stable. In fact, some people believe Mary and Joseph were given a room in a ground floor caravanasi. It was a bit posher than a stable, sort of travel lodge of its day. There would have been animals, of course, but the travellers of the day would have been upstairs, carousing and drinking and resting from their travels. I'm dressed fairly modestly for a change because I am the innkeeper's wife. However, don't underestimate me. I was the power behind the throne, or rather the business. It was I who decided where to put people and whom would be welcome. I have a warm heart though, and I would have taken pity on Mary and Joseph. I wouldn't have fancied the shepherds though, but that's another story. Bye! <laughs> In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrolment, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them.
welcome back. I now have the nomination for Farming Today live from Bethlehem. Now, rather unusual for an awards night, but we like to acknowledge diversity and offer a level playing field. Oh, I should say fields because there's not one, but three shepherds. Over to them. <laughs> that I'd be invited to be on this Star of Bethlehem Award shebang and possibly win. I thought my main talent was looking after sheep. <laughs> well, it's easy to underestimate one's gifts, especially yours. <laughs> <laughs> we in the know understand we have to be aware of the weather conditions, hyper-observant, and be a vet in the process. I wish I'd seen the star. Personally, I was fast asleep, but I'm glad you realised there are people in our field. Angels, we called them. You should be on the apprentice. Observant, intuitive, and open to new ideas. Angels indeed. Well, I suppose it has been a team effort. As we're in the green room, let's have another couple before they give out the awards. Oh, whoops, are we still on camera? Sorry. Right. Now, our next nominee is for the Up to the Minute Science today, live from Boffin University, Jerusalem. Now, this is where your vote as viewers really, really count. So over to Dr. Brian Box. I'm so honored to be nominated for the science category. Just to remind you of the groundbreaking clip that actually came from the Apollo space capsule. Amazing. Hello, Apollo, Apollo, are you reading me? I understand from you that you have an amazing view. Can you tell me what you're seeing at the moment? Well, it's been pretty quiet up here. We've been making sure the instruments are working well. Earth is awesome. Oh, what's that? That's such an amazing light. I, I don't understand. We're not expecting to see anything untoward. There are so many lights. And we can hear singing. It's so bizarre. The light, it seems to be approaching us. Perhaps you need to let Houston know that we're losing our connection. I think it's an angel. Mayday. Mayday. I hope up to the minute science today wins. It was such an amazing piece of live television.
light of visions be afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Now, especially for you, we have a winning clip from Michael Raylin's behind the scene travelogue. Now, Michael's not with us today because he's still in Bethlehem. Hello, I'm Michael Raylin. It's always exciting to go to another country off the beaten track. So exciting to meet new people. I could also get some new ideas for my wardrobe. I understand the other travellers are resting after their long journey. Thank you for sparing me a few moments of your valuable time. Tell me, where do you come from? And is this a tradition? Do you always carry your wealth round with you? And what about the gifts? I understand that all these kings or wise people have the most amazing packages. In the next programme we'll explore the symbolism. Do you have to worry about insurance? Uh, we aren't allowed to do public placements, but perhaps you can tell me where you bought your costume. The BBC costume department is always looking for new ideas. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, 
till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Welcome back after the break. Hope you enjoyed your cuppa and your bright comet chocolates. <laughs> I'm now pleased to announce the nomination for the best newcomer in Call the Bethlehem Midwife. It is Jessie Snow. We've just called her because Jessie's on her way to another presentation. Good luck, Jessie. Good luck. I was so honoured to debut in Call the Bethlehem Midwife. I know a lot of births for centuries were home deliveries, but this was in a stable. I even went out with real midwives on call to get a feel for it. Method acting, you know. 
But of course, I had been told it was going to be a water birth, but actually there was not enough time. There was not enough water. It was so quick. Mary was getting on so well. I only had time just to catch the baby. That's why if I win this award, I want to thank the real midwives out there. I want to thank the nuns. I want to thank my husband and my daughters. And of course, the film crew and Gertrude, the tea lady. I've got to go now. Bye for now. Look at that. Songs of praise. I wouldn't have thought they'd have got an award. Oh. It's actually about a parish that's making a difference to the community. Apparently they celebrated 800 years of Christianity in Solihull, so they thought they'd do 800 acts of kindness. Amazing. It actually would be good to see a church making a difference. After the year we've had, it's great to have good news stories. Well, what do they say about the butterfly effect? If one butterfly can affect the other side of the world, just think what hundreds of acts of kindness can do. Gosh. Let us pray. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to celebrate the great festival of Christmas. In this service, we hear and receive the good news of the birth of Christ and we offer to God our thanksgiving in the joyful singing of carols. As we gather together in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save. For the church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's holy wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. For the world, which is already Christ's, that all its peoples may recognise their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace everywhere. For all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved, that the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. We commend all whom we love, all who have asked for our prayers, to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father, and say together as Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Well, viewers, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Been waiting for. Oh, oh. All right, that's Wendy. She's one of our backstage crew. Now, let's have a look what we've got here. It's always so exciting, isn't it, when you get to this point? Now let's have a little look what we've got. Oh my goodness. Well, everyone is a winner. Apparently, the judges realise that every person is so important. After all, 
without them, we wouldn't have a Christmas story. So congratulations to all. And a Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs>